Hello YouTube, so I've just got a lot of random stuff I need to get done in the fish room today. I'm not really sure yet what I'm going to do and what I'm going to procrastinate with. One thing's for sure, you're destined to see a lot of cool fish, so stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so the first tank we're working on today is the 75 gallon African cichlid mixed tank. You can see it is just complete and utter fail. If you remember a few weeks back, I tore down a 40 gallon tank that had a bunch of African cichlids in and put it in here, and it's really increased the bio load. This single hang on back filter just cannot remove all the waste. Uh, parameters are perfectly fine, it just does not look good. There's two sponge filters in there. I think I'm gonna take out this small sponge filter over here because it really doesn't do anything anyways, and I'll add another hang on back filter. Right now, I gotta get the scrub in the front of this glass so at least I can see through it when I'm done. All right, so I got my water down about 75%. I do need to dig that sponge filter out still. Uh, what I'm gonna do is add another Aquion 75 gallon hang on the back filter that I just dug out of my garage. So this is the hang on back filter I used in a shallow tank. I actually cut the intake tube so it would fit and work. However, now I can't find the other end of it with the strainer on it. So I'm gonna have to do a little DIY. What I did find was this piece of sponge filter. The sponge sits over that, and I'm just gonna hot glue it right in there like that. And bada bing, bada boom, I got myself a new strainer. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna have to cut out a notch in my top over here to fit the hang on back filter. Luckily I just have these Lexan DIY tops, so it'll be nice and easy. I'll get to work on that and then check back in. All right, my trusty jigsaw made quick work of that. Now the gross thing we're gonna have to do is take out this sponge filter, which I have never cleaned the entire time this tank has been set up. It's kind of a pain to get through it with all these rocks, but now I can just lift it out. And boy, doesn't that look good. That's what that bucket's for. <laughs> Just drop all my random stuff in there. Still one more piece, I had this double stacked. You can see it down there. Oh man, I'm gonna collapse my rock wall here. Here is how you break a tank. Oh, Pleco, calm down. Boy, doesn't that one look yummy too? Ugh. All right, now we are ready for the filter. So that airline was split between that pump over there, so now I have no pressure at all. Not to worry, I got my trusty tool kit here. Let's see, we are going to need one of these guys here. And we'll come over here. Uh, this is gonna require two hands. All right, got that swapped out and we got pressure again. Take this piece here. Back in the toolbox, close that up. My nifty little tackle box here, all kinds of junk in there. All right, what next? Oh, we gotta check in to see if the filter is dried, which I'm sure it is. Get that hooked up. Hopefully I can find a power for it. I forgot about that. Uh, all right, all right, there we go. I cut it a little too wide over here, but not bad. It was just a guesstimate, just doing a rough cut there. Who needs to measure? This is only for mechanical filtration, that's why I only have batting in there. This one is for bio, clearly, right? I got plants in there, and it's full of bio balls that you can't see, but. So mechanical, biological, and no chemical. And we are ready to fill this bad boy back up, and hopefully, it'll at least look a little better. It's not gonna look a lot better, probably won't look any better. But at least I got a water change done, and a little extra filtration. I think the next tank we're gonna have to work on is this mess down here. You can barely see in this tank, there's so much duckweed. All my guppy grass is dying back. I don't know how I'm gonna get all that guppy grass out. It's gonna be a pain because it's not really an open top. It's acrylic, so you only got these small cutouts to work with. So we'll see what I can do with that tank next. For now, I gotta get this guy filled up. All right, so it's been a few hours. The water has cleared up somewhat nicely. Still lots of particles floating around, and that's gonna be the case for probably a couple days. Here's my DIY filter intake, doing the job slowly but surely. Fish are a little bit ornery after a water change, that's to be expected. You can see a lot of fighting going on there. Well, a lot of posturing, not a lot of fighting. But overall, the tank just looks a lot better. I did add another light on there for everyone. 
not trying to fool anyone on my great aquarium cleaning skills. I just wanted to get some more color in there as that cheap eBay light just does not do these fish justice. So we got a Phoenix light on there now, looking a lot better. And since I'm standing right here, we can do a quick update on patches and the fish to be named later. Doing well, he is eating. Still not sure if he's blind or not. He just kind of mopes around though. He's kind of mopey. I don't know about this guy. He seems to be in good health. He's eating, swims around. Just every once in a while, it gets pretty mopey. He's got an emo goldfish, I think. Someone also let me know to remove these uh, card holders here with the names of the plants on them. I didn't even think about that. That's why it's so great to have you guys out there helping me out. If he was to run into like the corner, that's not gonna feel good. That's a nice sharp corner through all these plants. So I'm gonna reach in there and take those out actually right now before I forget. Now we're gonna take a look at the 37 gallon tank here that I have pretty much completely ignored for about two months, maybe longer. Basically this has just been a set it and forget it. I've been doing water changes and feeding and that's about it. I haven't spent any time looking at what's going on. Uh, if anything's breeding, you can see the long fin white cloud minnows are definitely breeding. Panda guppies, where are you at? I just saw one. Is that one? There's one. I'm hoping I can see some panda guppy fry. We still have shrimp. Now I haven't seen any pom-pom crabs in here in a long time. Ooh, look at that right there. Where is it? That is a long fin green dragon fry. Holy smokes. I don't know how bad I just stumbled over that, but long fin green dragon fry. Right there, that is super awesome. There's another one over here. That's no, not gonna focus on it. Wow, that is really exciting. How many more can I spot? Is that one right there too? They're everywhere. We got a little shrimplet down here. See, this is why it's just fun to not look at a tank for a while. Life just happens. What's that quote in Jurassic Park? Life finds a way or something like that. I mean, granted, I'm doing water changes and feeding a ton. It's just cool when you have a tank that you haven't looked at in a long time and you can come back and see that the shrimp are thriving. There's long fin white cloud fry, uh, long fin white cloud minnow fry, I should say. And then to see all kinds of long fin green dragon bushy nose fry is just really, really awesome. I did not expect them to breed, to be honest. All right, so my original plan was to try to get this duckweed out of here. Obviously not gonna be able to get all of it, but we have just a sea of duckweed. I'm gonna drop the water down a little bit and then see how much I can scoop out. The challenge is gonna be scooping it out without scooping out any shrimplets or any fry. So we'll see how well this is gonna go. All right, so I've started slowly, painstakingly removing this duckweed by hand. I don't wanna use a net because one, the net will get tangled up in all the guppy grass. Also, a net, it's gonna be a lot easier to accidentally scoop up fish and shrimp with a net. So I just do it by hand, dump it in my tote over here. This is my duckweed farm for my goldfish. We are filling back up now. I pushed a lot of the guppy grass to the back. I pulled out a huge portion of it as well. So a lot of people ask me if I sell guppy grass. I do not, unfortunately, this tank is infested with not only duckweed, but even worse, bladderwort. And I do not want to get bladderwort in anyone else's tank. I'll show you what it is here in case you don't know. Probably not gonna be able to pick it up. Hmm. I can see it when I'm looking at it, but I can't see it. The camera is not getting it. Let's try this. It's really hard to tell, but it's right in here. Can we zoom in on there? The really stringy stuff there is what we're looking for. So where am I at here? Like right here, that long string there. So that is why I cannot sell my guppy grass out of here. Almost impossible to get rid of too. All right, water change is complete and this tank is looking a thousand times better in my opinion. So the long fin white cloud minnows are definitely doing well. They made it through this really hot summer. It's still like 100 degrees today but uh, it's really slowed down their spawning, unfortunately, but hopefully it kicks in in the fall here. 
The panda guppies, unfortunately, did not fare well. Uh, I only seen maybe a half a dozen, if that. And I think I started with around 20. You can see one floating around up here. And I don't know if it's just the white clouds are out competing them, if their fry are getting eaten. Not really sure. So when I break this tank down, hopefully next weekend, uh, not breaking it down, I'm just gonna have to remove everything to get these guys out of here and then put everything back in. I plan on taking the panda guppies out as well and moving them into their own tank. Well, look what I just found. Where's he at? So there's a baddest, but there's also, you can see a detritus worm flowing around in there. I just saw a Heterandria formosa, which is like the world's smallest live bear. I had no idea I still had those in here. Shoot. Oh, there he is right there. Where is he? Not that he's an awesome looking fish or anything, but there he is right there. So there you go. Apparently I still have some of these guys in here. It's really hard to focus on these little guys. This is an adult, if you can believe that. Go back up a little more. There you go, scooting around. That's awesome, and it's also cool that I still have the uh, baddest in here. That was a female black tiger baddest right here. Awesome. See, that's why I love this tank. You just never know what you're going to see. If you take a quick minute and just look down here, you can see the fry are everywhere. Apparently, I just got a message. Better go check that. So, the only other thing I have to get done today is a water change in the goldfish tank. I treated this tank two days ago with General Cure, Erythromycin, and Ikex for the new guy here. So his eyes aren't looking too much better, if at all, but he does swim around just fine. He eats, so just going to have to continue to monitor him to make sure, well, not to make sure, but try to figure out if he's blind or not. I mean, even if he is, he's still getting around okay. So about to put the siphon in here and do a water change. So while we are filling up the goldfish tank here, I just want to reach out to everyone and say thank you. I've been getting into a lot of new fish that I've never kept lately, the betta fish and the goldfish here. And I've got just a ton of advice, lots of feedback, and uh, the community has just been great. So I've always said I'm far from an expert and I always need help, always looking for help. So I really appreciate it. Thank you everyone. And we are almost full here. So I'm gonna put the camera down before I get on a long spiel and overflow this tank. And a quick update on the bettas. As you see, I did not learn my lesson. As some of you remember, my female betta jumped over or kind of squeezed through that little hole up there. Where? Right there. And made it into the 40 gallon tank. Well, I did not heed that warning and the female betta that was in this one did the same thing. So you can see female betta number two right there. This is going back to the original unboxing video. And then female betta number one over there. And then female betta number three right here, still doing great. The male is doing awesome. Let's give these guys some light. There we go. Maybe a little more. There. So I got a lot of feedback on this male. Apparently he's a rose tail. I don't know anything about that. I've been doing a lot of research since that video. Uh, I got a lot of advice not to breed him. So I think he's just gonna be a show fish. I really like the way he looks, the colors. So I don't think I'm going to try to breed them just based on some advice I got from some betta experts. But the female over here I'm definitely going to be breeding. She looks amazing. Same with the blue one that's in this tank who is hiding. Uh, still up in that corner. Maybe come back if I can get a good shot at her. I mean this is a good looking female too but I would say definitely my least favorite out of the three. But I still love this fish. All right, YouTube, that's going to be it for me today. That's kind of what a day is like for me in the fish room here. I just kind of find tanks to work on, things that need to get done, do water changes, etc., etc. Find awesome babies. Happens all the time. So I hope you had fun. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. Hit the notification bell and leave a comment down below if there's anything that I haven't shown in a while that you'd like to take a look at. And I'll see everyone next time.